San Antonio starts right now. We are tracking some potentially, well, actually no. We've been going through some nasty weather, <laughs> and but it did have an effect on plans for some TxDOT construction that has been postponed. We're going to tell you about that. The interchange at Loop 1604 and I-10, it's going to be scheduled, rescheduled for another weekend. And taking a live look outside, 56 degrees. Sarah, I know, thank you, you've been up all night tracking these storms for us, but hey, most of it is moved through. Yeah, most of it is out of the San Antonio area. There are still a lot of folks though east of San Antonio okay. that are still getting some good rainfall. Take a look at the radar right now. You can see that around San Antonio, the rain has really, for the most part, come to an end. There's still a few sprinkles up in northwestern Bear County, uh, but generally most of the rainfall is off to the east, moving through Seguin, Gonzales, Hallettsville, Quero. Uh, Yorktown and there was some stronger storms further south toward Victoria, but even those are starting to weaken pretty significantly. So we are looking at a beautiful sunny day today. The high will be 70 degrees, but we will have a few gusts of up to 30 miles per hour. And tomorrow Sunday is when it's really going to get windy. We'll have gusts of up to 40 to 50 miles per hour, but all in all again, plenty of sunshine. Hey, coming up in the forecast, we're going to take a detailed look at neighborhood rainfall totals. Those details in just a few minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. We are asking Uvalde CISD why one of its schools was not locked down when a gun was found on campus. The district says a student brought the weapon to Morales Junior High Thursday morning. The student who brought the gun now faces disciplinary action. It's not clear if the gun was loaded, but Uvalde CISD statement says the student planned to sell the gun to another student. The district also says the gun was not intended to harm students or staff. And the Texas Department of Public Safety has launched a new free database that can take some of the guessing work out of violent crime background checks. It contains the names of people who have been convicted of certain violent offenses. The violent offender data database only shows convictions of assault, sexual assault and aggravated assault on two or more occasions. It also includes information on defendants convictions of aggravated sexual assault involving family violence, which includes continuous violence against the family, stalking or any combination of such offenses. The database was created by House Bill 5202 during the last regular session of the Texas Legislature. You can learn more about it by scanning this QR code on your screen. They'll take you to ksat.com to find the link to that database. In your Texas headlines, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is suing five cities, Austin, San Marcos, Killeen, and Denton to block their ordinances decriminalizing low-level marijuana possession. Paxton says in a press release this week that the cities violated state laws and the Texas Constitution concerning marijuana, claiming it's unlawful for places to have laws that don't line up with the laws set by the Texas legislature. The Texas Tribune reports, however, the five cities are home rule cities, meaning under the Texas Constitution, those places are allowed to establish any law unless it's expressly forbidden by the state or federal law. Paxton is now seeking to repeal the city's ordinances and make them enforce state law. And Governor Greg Abbott will be at Shelby Park in Eagle Pass tomorrow with 14 other governors to talk about the current border crisis. Governor Abbott is set to provide an update on Operation Lone Star border policies. Now, KSAT will have a crew there and will bring you the very latest over the weekend. Tesla could soon be leaving Delaware to move more of its business to the Lone Star State. CEO Elon Musk says he plans to have shareholders vote on whether to move the company's incorporation to Texas, where it's headquartered. This comes after a Delaware court struck down his 2018 pay package. The net value of the compensation Musk received is worth $51 billion today. All right, the San Antonio Spurs were hoping for a better outcome against the New Orleans Pelicans team. First half, Devin Vassell started off strong, giving the Spurs a 24 to 18 advantage. The ball is popped loose to Blake Wesley, who shows the Spurs a ruthless basket. 
Rookie Victor Wimbayama hits the turnaround and draws the foul to the second half now. Wimbayama with the steal to Jeremy Sohan, throws it down. Pelicans' Brandon Ingram goes right around Wimby and finishes and ties the game at 86. But New Orleans would take the lead soon after that. Williamson drives and Wimbayama is called for a fl f flagrant foul. Under 30 to play, Trey Jones missed the layup. Goes and Zion goes coast to coast to take the lead. The Spurs buzzer three attempt doesn't fall. But during the process, Trey Jones got that heartbreaking foul. And in a tough loss, Spurs lose 114 to 113. Vassell led the Spurs in scoring and another double double for Sohan and Wemby with the nearly a triple double. After the game, Coach Pop was asked about the late no call on Trey. People get shoved, you know, they can't go to that, you know, fouls get called, fouls don't get called, you go to the next play. We could all moan all night about this guy got hit, this guy got hit, so did their guys, they got hit, you know, it's, you don't go there. Was that the shot you wanted from Devin? Yeah, sure. We, we'd rather throw it to the rim and go dunk it, but that's the shot we got. Over to San Antonio FC, the players started practice this week to prepare for the 2024 campaign. Their first game isn't until early March, but it's never too early to start learning from coach Alan Marcina. There's plenty of new faces for San Antonio FC over to the half. Rossiter is getting their first experience with the new club. The SAFC vets gave some advice to the new guys about what it's like playing at Toyota Field. Oh, uh, Mitch showed me a video. The first day I came here, he showed me a video of when they won the championship in 2022. And it, it looks like it's a special atmosphere. It looks like the fans really buy into the team. So I'm really excited to be here. I think it's going to be a special year, and I'm excited to play in front of the fans. Oh, man, I show him the video. There's a, I had Gabe send it to me a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's a video of Santi's third goal in the final. And the crowd, when Tuku spun those two guys on the corner, you just see everyone rise up. And it's not filtered through the, the broadcasting booth. It was just the 4K camera. Everyone's cheering already, 10,000 people on their feet. Everything goes silent right as Abu hits the ball, hits Santi, and all of a sudden, yeah! You know, like that gives me goosebumps. You know, I, I love playing here. And, um, you know, I think it's the, the best environment in, in U.S. soccer. And, you know, I don't care what people say about MLS. You know, this is, this is the real deal. People actually care. Coming up tonight on Instant Replay, you'll hear from the coach on a tactic he used to learn more about his new players. And what you're looking at, no, they aren't just old, crusty, dusty sneakers. They belonged to the man, the myth, the legend, Michael Jordan himself. These shoes were worn by the six-time NBA champ in each of his championships. The lineup of shoes is dubbed the Dynasty Collection, and it's up for auction. It's estimated they'll sell between seven and ten million dollars. It's 608 and 56 degrees. We had some thunderstorms overnight, lots of lightning. It was beautiful. We really needed that rain. I welcome the rain, but hey, Sarah Spivey says it's going to shape up to be a beautiful day just in time for the cattle drive. She'll have her forecast when we come back. This week, new data was released by UK-based site Jeff Batt saying Texas is the nation's most Stanley-obsessed state. Okay, that kind of makes sense. San Antonio artist Colton Valentine's newest mural shows the popular pink and red Galentine's Collection Stanley Cup with the phrase Quencher 210 Tumblr. I love that. That's on the cup. The mural is located at 7-Eleven on the intersection of San Pedro and East Fredericksburg Road. I love the realistic murals like that yeah. one very similar to the one of uh the tacos with the foil oh, wrapped yeah, on that's the salsa right. that's right they're, do they're you awesome. have a big old stanley tumbler no yeah neither do i no i'm not a i'm this is like a yeti, a yeti from like 2010. I know. <laughs> not that cool it'll be interesting to see what the next big cup thing is that i like drinking famous. out of glass sarah and i were talking we about do, i do too just a nice glass no plastics because i don't know it seems safe, right? <laughs> yeah. 
does seem safe. Hey, you know what? We got some good rain last night. We did. In fact, uh, some areas were dealing with even some uh, gusty winds, some smaller sized hail as well. But for the most part, the storms last night were more bark than bite. And you can see the, the rain is really exiting uh, as we speak. It's the heavier rain right now, though, is falling for areas like Gonzalez and Hallettsville in the KSAT 12 viewing area, by the way. Quero getting some good moderate rainfall as well, Victoria and Goliad, but really the heavier of the storms are heading on their way to Houston. We do have some lingering rain behind this nearer to uh, George West, few flashes of lightning in near Beeville as well. And then over here near to San Antonio on the northwest side of town, right at that Kendall and Comal County line. So Bulverde, Timberwood Park, Scenic Oaks, Bernie, up toward Comfort and Sisterdale, as well as near Lake Hills, just some lingering light rain showers. These are going to be the last of the rain today, and everything is going to clear out nicely for the weekend here. We're going to have nice weather, but it is going to be a bit windy. One thing I want to do, though, is talk about how this rain has really, really helped out with the drought situation. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the drought monitor here. And I want to show you there the area of extreme drought right here. We can go ahead and outline it because what I want to do is I want to show you how much rain has fallen just within that area of extreme drought. We'll go ahead and turn on the rainfall amounts uh, over the last 24 hours. And you can see that a decent amount of rain has fallen over this area of extreme drought, anywhere from about half an inch to an inch of rainfall, even near Medina Lake, a, a area of about two inches of radar estimated rain. So some good rainfall along that area of extreme drought, but also even around San Antonio, especially on the southeast and south side of town, nearer to Elmendorf, dealing with two and a half inches of radar estimated estimated rain on the south side of 281 there two and a half inches of radar estimated rainfall as well and officially at the airport we had 85 hundredths of an inch of rainfall so not too bad when you consider uh, that we had to deal with a bit of a wake-up call with the loud thunder uh, and bright lightning but it is going to be a sunny day today we're seeing skies already clear it'll be 58 by 9 around noon 66 and the high today will be 70 degrees now it is going to be a bit breezy. Winds are going to be from the west at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. So a little bit of a breeze. It'll be 75 in Crease of Spring, 77 in Catula, 69 in Canyon Lake, 66 in Kerrville, 73 in Del Rio, 73 in Gonzales. As we take a look at the weather setup, all the rain is exiting San Antonio, but still the Houston area getting a lot of rainfall, all because of this big upper level low that's quite dynamic and it's going to get pretty windy as this low moves across Texas. Today we'll see gusts of up to 30, but tomorrow gusts of up to 45 miles per hour in the morning. So be prepared for the windy conditions. Otherwise, the week ahead is going to be fairly quiet. We'll have cool mornings and comfortable afternoons, but you'll definitely notice those winds tomorrow, Sarah, gusts of up to 40 to 50. Hey, coming up, a lot of people, Sarah, send in pictures to KSAC Connect of the storms. I want to go ahead and show off some of those. So if you have some, post them to KSAC Connect. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. It's 616, 55 degrees. Valentine's Day, a week and a half away. Oh my gosh. After the break, we'll tell you what the Alamo City has planned this year for lovebirds, as well as all of our bachelors and bachelorettes out there. Let's take a look at lotto numbers. Pick three, six, four, zero, fireball six, daily four, zero, zero, three, six, fireball nine. Cash five, seven, 11, 17, 19, 35. And Mega Millions, I know it's up there. I can't remember, it's over 200 million for sure. 11, 22, 42, 64, 69. Mega Ball 18, Mega Fire 3, good luck. The Alamo City feeling the love this month. So let's take a look at some of the Valentine's Day events for all relationship statuses. So for the couples, the Bear County Courthouse offering free wedding ceremonies on Valentine's Day. All you need is a marriage license 72, 72 hours before showing up. And the courthouse says the first ceremony will start at midnight. And in downtown San Antonio, 
Capistrano Soap Company offering a DIY spa day for any girl group on February 11th. And the Valentine's capital of the world, the San Antonio Zoo, holding a speed dating event called Meet Your Next Ex on February 10th. More information on all Valentine's events. To purchase tickets, head to ksat.com. And speaking of Valentine's Day and the San Antonio Zoo, the zoo's Valentine's event, very popular, I mean, it's known across the country, Cry Me a Cockroach, is entering the latest rap beef after Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion had a falling out this week. To no one's surprise, the Texas Zoo cited with the Texas native Megan Thee Stallion. The zoo's now viral post says, hey, Megan the Stallion, <laughs> let us know if you want to name a roach, rat, or lettuce after someone you're beefing with and have it eaten by any of the animals at, at the zoo on Valentine's Day. The zoo then added the hashtag don't mess with Texas and tagged Minaj in the post. Dang, oh my gosh. I guess we'll see if the San Antonio Zoo is gonna have a diss track written about them. Wow, okay, 621 and 55 degrees. Hey, February is Black History Month and a new exhibit in Sutherland Springs is opening up today. We'll tell you all about it after the break. February is Black History Month, and a new exhibit that honors enslaved people is opening today in Sutherland Springs. The exhibit is a display of quilt squares that represent the lives of men and women who were enslaved at the Polly Plantation known as Whitehall in Wilson County. The quilt squares are used because there are no photos. In all, there are 29 quilt squares with a description of each enslaved person's life. The display is a permanent exhibit in Polly Room at the Sutherland Springs Historical Museum. 625 and 55 degrees ahead in our next half hour from mortgage rates to our nation's outlook on the current economy. We have your latest news from the finance world. Good morning. It is Saturday, 630, February 3rd, and we have a special guest with us, Mike Osterhage. Yep. All cowboyed up. We are getting ready for the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive, and of course it's kicking off at 11 o'clock, and we're going to be heading down there in just a, a little bit. But boy, I tell you what, this forecast couldn't have worked out better. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Sarah, you're in the middle of a meteorologist sandwich right now. I know. Now because we <laughs> have been... We have lucked out. We have been talking about the, the Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive, and the weather is going to be great, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be great. A little windy, a little breezy with gusts up to 30 miles per hour, but hey, look at that, 67 degrees right around 1 o'clock, and we'll be looking at a high of uh, 70 today. Here's a look at the Authority radar. All the heavier rain is falling right now near Hallettsville in our viewing area, near Quero in Yorktown, but the main shield of rain is leaving. We do have a couple of lingering isolated showers up near Bernie, Holotus area, Timberwood Park. These, This is the last, the absolute last of the rain because things are clearing behind this, and it's going to be a a sunny day. So what's up with the weather? What do you need to know? Well, we have seen about a half an inch to an inch and a half of widespread rainfall. I'll show you neighborhood rainfall totals and how that compares to the drought coming up in just a bit. We're going to have a sunny and dry weekend, but here's the rub. We are going to have gusty winds, especially by Sunday. Wind gusts of up to 40 to 50 miles per hour tomorrow morning. Coming up in the forecast, not only are we going to take a look at those neighborhood highs, but I'll show you how uh, fast those winds could gust in your neighborhood coming up in just a bit. Sarah, thank you. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar distancing himself from the district attorney's office. That's based on the DA's involvement with criminal justice reform group, Ren, the Wren Collective. So KSAT received 200 plus pages of text messages between the group's founder, DA, the group's founder and DA, Joe Gonzalez, and his first assistant. Those messages include conversations on everything from specific cases to press conference to policies such as bail reform. We spoke to the DA about these messages this week. And some of the messages also mention Sheriff Javier Salazar, including his investigation into migrants flown from San Antonio to Martha's Vineyard. And one of the texts dated back September 19th, 2022, the Raren Collective founder Jessica Brand sent Gonzalez and first assistant DA Christian Hendrickson a link to a story about the sheriff's plan to investigate the flights. 
The DA goes on to say Salazar was interested in doing a joint press conference and goes into detail about their conversation. So in a letter to the DA sent Thursday from the sheriff, he says he's seen the stories on the Warren Collective. The letter says in part, quote, I know nothing of this organization, but seeing some of the things discussed among you all gives me pause on seeking your advice on legal matters moving forward says, quote, Joe, you seem to be quoting me on things I intended to be confidential, end quote. And in a second letter was sent to the Warren Collective from an attorney representing the sheriff, calling on the group to, quote, cease and desist from using the sheriff or BCSO to, quote, further your agenda, end quote. We continue to reach out to the Warren Collective, but we have not heard back at this time. Sheriff Salazar also declined to comment However, the DA sent us this statement saying, quote, I have responded to the sheriff directly and clarified my role as a criminal district attorney of Bear County as it relates to the potential prosecution of criminal matters. I now consider this matter closed, end quote. And we've also asked to speak to the first assistant DA involved in those text messages, Christian Hendrickson. The DA's spokesperson, Pete Gallego, replied to that request via email saying in part, quote, D.A. Joe Gonzalez answered detailed questions about the issue when he interviewed with Steve Spreester and Myra Arthur earlier this week. He was clear, direct, and forthcoming in his responses. He continues to say neither he nor any other employee of the office can add further clarity to a simple effort to supplement the knowledge and expertise in our office in order to improve the administration of justice, end quote. He also criticized KSAT's coverage. And you can read the full response as well as watch our in-depth report on the Warren Collective, including our interview with the county's most senior judge, Judge Ron Ronhell, also questioning the relationship between district attorney's office and the Warren Collective. All this right now on KSAT.com. And a 16-year-old was arrested this week, just two weeks after a fake threat that put Bernie High School and Champion High on lockdown. Our John Paul Barajas explains what police say led to that arrest. If anybody has information that there is still danger or there's no danger, I'd be happy to hear that. Parents panicked and desperate for answers amid a swarm of law enforcement. <laughs> this was the scene Wednesday after a threat was made at Bernie Champion High School. Police say a second potential threat was also identified at Bernie High School, leading to both campuses being put on lockdown. The unknown caller said there were multiple bombs in and around the school and that he was also armed with an AR-15 and ready to shoot anybody coming into the school. No bomb, gun, or suspect was found at either school. Bernie Police Chief Steve Perez says an investigation into how that threat was made led them to a 16-year-old former Bernie ISD student who now lives in Bear County. The search warrant was for electronic devices, computers, cell phones, anything uh, that we, we felt was used to push out that message. And so that's what we're in there. But no guns, no bombs, no anything like that was found at his residence. That search warrant was executed Thursday night. By Friday afternoon, the teen was in custody and charged with three felonies, terroristic threat, terrorism, and false report. Do we know any history of a bad reputation at the ISD of the student here? Or? That's still ongoing investigation. That's still part of it. Any criminal history or do not criminal history that we're aware of? No, sir. Not that we know of at this point. Police have not identified the suspect because that person is a minor. John Paul Barajas. KSAT 12 News. In your morning headlines, the first official Democratic primary is happening in South Carolina today, and Democrats hope to diversify early voters. Both President Joe Biden and VP Kamala Harris have visited South Carolina several times. Biden won in South Carolina. That was a key moment back in 2020, and during his reelection campaign, he was hoping for the same thing. He swept all. Um, you know, 46 counties there in South Carolina. And it was after some of the early states where he didn't have as much strength. New Hampshire and Nevada will be the next Democratic primary states to vote. Those primaries happening this Tuesday. And the Supreme Court says the military academy at West Point can continue considering race as a factor in its admissions process. The ruling deals a blow to the anti affirmative affirmative action group students for fair admissions the group is suing west point and the naval academy for having what they call unconstitutional admissions processes last year cases brought on by the sfa 
A led the Supreme Court to declare race-based admissions policies unlawful, except for at military service academies. And actor Carl Weathers has died at the age of 76. His manager said he died peacefully at home on Thursday, the cause of death still unknown. Weathers was known for many successful movies and shows like Rocky, The Mandalorian, Law and Order, Chicago Med, and so many others. In your morning news, in a new CNN poll, only 26% of Americans feel the economy is starting to recover. That's up from 20% last summer, but 48% of Americans say they still believe the economy remains in a downturn. Overall, almost half of Americans say their financial situation is worse than it was a year ago. And home buyers are getting a bit of a break. New data from Freddie Mac says the average rate for a 30-year mortgage falling a bit to just over 6.6% last week. Rates have been falling since hitting the high of a close 8%. In February, when love is in the air, and so are the deals, and of course, President's Day always brings out the sales on big appliances. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz shows us some top-rated TVs, phones, and mattresses on sale right now. Thinking about a new TV? Pre-game deals are second only to Black Friday. In the beginning of February, you can find lots of great deals on TVs. As we get ready for the Super Bowl, plenty of retailers are offering big discounts right now. Consumer Reports says February is the best time to buy some top-tested products, like this big screen, a 98-inch 4K TV from TCL. It's $2,000 at Best Buy. That's a $3,000 savings. The electronics deals don't stop there. Last month, Samsung unveiled its newest smartphone, the Galaxy S24. This means that older models will start to go on sale and there will be incentives to buy new ones, such as trade-in offers. The Samsung Galaxy S23 is now $699.99 at Samsung. Consumer Reports says this phone has some of the best cameras for photos and video. President's Day sales focus on big-ticket things for the home. This LG French door smart refrigerator is reduced to $14.98 at the Home Depot. It aced CR's test for keeping uniform temperatures. We always say never pay full price for a mattress, and February is a great month to get one at a discount. Thanks to President's Day, we'll see savings all month long. This Casper Wave Hybrid is $21.66 for a queen size at Best Buy and Casper. This mattress in a box gets high marks for comfort in owner surveys. February is also a great time to find deals on space heaters and dishwashers, just maybe not for Valentine's Day. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Marilyn. It's 55 and 639. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Man thunderstorms last night. I don't know about you guys. Some people love like rainy thunderstorm weather. I don't sleep well with thunderstorms. It keeps me up. The lightning coming through the window. Sarah knows. But hey, she says no more of that. When the sun comes up, she'll have our forecast for the cattle drive when we come back. SeaWorld Entertainment Incorporated undergoing a name change. The company announced this week it will be known as United Parks and Resorts Incorporated. That's starting on February 12th. In a press release, the company says the new name unites the company's world-class portfolio of seven brands across 13 parks in the United States and Abu Dhabi. All 13 parks under the company will keep their usual park names. And speaking of SeaWorld, the park is offering free admission all season long for preschool age kids and teachers, including events around Halloween and Christmas. Registration for this special must be made online at SeaWorld's front gate by the end of March. You can find more information on our website, kset.com. Just look for this article under our things to do section. And they were showing that uh, giant swing. No, thanks. I did that. Mm. It, it was, honestly, it was so scary. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not afraid of heights or anything, but that was, that was a tough ride for me. But fun if you're a thrill seeker. Not a thrill seeker. No. You know, we got some good rain last yeah. night, Sarah. But up until the point, there was a risk for some quarter-sized hail or slightly larger. Mm -hmm. Anytime you mention hail and the possibility in San Antonio, people show up. Take a look at this case. I love it. Connect to pictures. And in hey, we're prepared, man. Connect. Yeah, you, you, you better be prepared for that. I just, are those... 
air mattress. That's my guess. I could be wrong, um, <laughs> but it definitely looks like uh, they're air mattresses. And we did have some hail uh, up to the size of Nichols, mainly out near uh, toward Lytle and then up in parts of Kendall County, some nickel sized hail as well, but not necessarily that damaging quarter sized hail. Take a look at the authority radar right now. The main swath of rainfall is well east of San Antonio near Hallettsville, Victoria, Edna, pushing toward Houston. That's where we still got some flashes of lightning and some moderate rain. The very last of the rain is moving through northern Bear County right now, Comal County and Kendall County. You can see these are just some very spotty showers, no lightning with these. Uh, this is at the tail end of the clearing line. We're going to be seeing clearing skies today, but right now we do have a good downpour for some neighborhoods nearer to scenic oaks uh, and off toward Cross Mountain right there just to the west of I-10. Otherwise, again, things have really started to quiet down for us. We've seen some good rainfall from this system. Here's a look at the drought and the rainfall. So you can see the bullseye of extreme drought across the hill country and parts of those areas got up to about half an inch of rain. That is going to help out the drought situation, but take a look at these numbers closer to San Antonio. 85 hundredths of an inch at the airport, La Quintera area getting an inch and a quarter, Bulverde six tenths of an inch of rain, six tenths of an inch near New Braunfels, two inches of rain for Adkins, nearly two inches of rain for the Bronick Lake area, and then off to the west last night, Laughlin Air Force Base clocked in a little bit less than half an inch, Smiley area getting more than two inches of rain. So some good rain. A few lingering showers are out there right now, but sky are going to be clearing. We'll be at 62 at 10 noon, 66 degrees, and we'll be looking at the high temperature today of 70. It is going to be sunny, but it is going to be a little breezy. We'll have a few gusts of up to 30 miles per hour. 68 in Bernie, it'll be 69 in Bandera, 73 in Divine, 73 in Floresville, 71 in Seguin and New Braunfels, 73 in Nixon, Smiley, 73 in Gonzales, and it'll be 73 in Givaldi. All right, it is going to get windy today breezy yes we'll see a few gusts of up to 30 miles per hour even higher gusts off to the west near del rio and eagle pass with gusts up to 40 miles per hour tonight things will briefly calm down but by the start of the day tomorrow take a look at these wind gusts tomorrow in the mid morning and into the early afternoon we'll have wind gusts of up to 50 miles per hour around San Antonio. That's enough to disrupt any kind of backyard barbecues or things going on on Sunday because those gusty winds will be around all of us around South Central Texas potentially seeing wind gusts of up to 40 to 50 miles per hour. So lightweight patio furniture, those kinds of things. Just be aware that a gust of 50 miles per hour can send that flying. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, winds will start to calm in the evening tomorrow, and it'll still be breezy on Monday, but generally the theme of the week is cool mornings and comfortable afternoons. Little to no chance for rain over the next several days, so it is good that we cashed in on some of that rain to start off the month, Sarah. Beautiful for the cattle drive. It's going to be great for uh, that uh, activities. It's going to be really awesome. And we'll have all that coverage starting at 9 here on GMS. I'm sorry, starting at 8, eight on yeah. GMSA. Uh, Mike Osterhage was already in the building. He's getting ready. And of course, that all of that live coverage starts at 11 a.m. here on KSAT and all of our apps. It is 648 and 54 degrees after the break. We have an important update to a story we brought to you last weekend. We'll hear from the apartment complex that had broken elevators causing disabled senior citizens to use the stairs. Well, we have some good news this morning. We're happy to report that Elevator is working again at an apartment complex. When we showed you a video last week of a man struggling to get down the stairs with his wheelchair, Garen Berger gives us an update. It was video that shocked us, you, and even the board chairman of Opportunity Home San Antonio, who called it concerning and unequivocally unacceptable. A man with a partially amputated leg making his way down the stairs of a public housing apartment because the elevator had reportedly been out for weeks. Nope. Well, no longer. 
and we have a lift. And lifted spirits among the residents. They fixed it yesterday, but today we start using the elevator. Thanks, Scott, and thanks, Ronald Phil. Opportunity Home told us last week that repairs had begun in early January, but one part was delayed, and then it was found another was needed, too. Rafael Moschiti says he saw the repair van, and later, the signs on the elevator were gone. Did you take a ride just for kicks? Oh, yeah, <laughs> two or three. <laughs> just going up and down, make sure they were good. <laughs> meaning it was no longer necessary to rely on the stairs. This is a community specifically for the elderly and disabled, so even at just three floors, that climb can be a bit much. You can afford the back pains. <laughs> Some of them are using, uh, have wheelchairs, walkers, canes, and it's incredibly, it's, it's incredibly frustrating. Opportunity Home told us last week it offered hotel rooms to the people affected, but not everyone wanted to go. I stay here because I have my appointments and I have already the Uber, you know, to pick me up, so I don't want to change nothing. And now, there's no need. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. We asked Opportunity Home how will make sure an extended outage like this has never happened again. A spokesperson told us in an email that supply chain issues continue to impact our contractors' ability to get products, especially for the creation of custom-made control panels. These are not parts that can be purchased at a home improvement store. That's from them. So we'll see what happens if it does happen again. It's 6.54 and 54 degrees. Let's take a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. And good morning to you on the Saturday. Coming up here on GMA, striking back what the White House is saying about U.S. forces launching airstrikes against targets in Syria and Iraq. The strike coming as a response to the deadly drone attack that killed three U.S. service members. And back here at home, serious storm warning. The National Weather Service saying an oncoming storm in California could bring a high risk for life-threatening and damaging flooding, while some areas are getting ready for some record warm temperatures next week. Plus, we are celebrating Carl weathers from the NFL playing field to Hollywood's embrace the life of the beloved actor who brought Apollo Creed to life that is all coming up right here on GMA we'll see you soon before you go now is the time to make sure you're registered to vote the Texas primary election in March will be here before we know it you have until this Monday February 5th to register to vote and submit an address change for the midterm election. You can check your status, verify your information on the Texas Secretary of State's website. Early voting will begin towards the end of February and election day is March 5th. And also don't forget to join us later this morning for our eight and 9 a.m. shows where we're gonna be featuring the annual Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive, giving you guys a preview with some of our favorite KSAT 12 members, including Mike Osterhage, who was just in studio, he's already getting ready to go out there. And Fiona will be out there, Jen, David Elder. It's gonna be lots of fun. And then of course, after GMSA, the parade is set to start at 11 a.m. right after Texas Eats. If you can't be there in person, you can always watch it on all of our platforms, KSAT 12, KSAT Plus, and our YouTube and website. And another reminder, TxDOT is postponing this weekend's major closure at the interchange at Loop 1604 and I-10. Officials say the planned closure will be rescheduled for another weekend. Construction crews still need to place the final beams for a flyover ramp that will connect 1604 to east to I-10 west to Bernie. All right, we are seeing the last of the rain move out here. It's going to be a breezy day with a high of 70. Windy, though, tomorrow and sunny with gusts up to 40 to 50 miles per hour. We're going to have nice weather in the week ahead. Cool mornings, comfortable afternoons. Hey, I'm excited for the cattle drive, Sarah. Me too. It's going to be great. Any excuse to see Mike Osterhage in a, in a cowboy in a, hat? Look at that. It's beautiful. Skies are clearing. <laughs>